It is Thursday, September 6th, and the Atlantic tropics remain very active with Hurricanes Michael and Leslie, and finally the partial remnant of Isaac situated to the south of New Orleans. Starting from right to left, beginning with Hurricane Michael, maximum sustained winds are 110 miles per hour, which is down from the 115 mile per hour Category 3 intensity that we saw earlier this morning, and that made Michael the first major hurricane of the 2012 season. And this was a NOAA satellite capture of the storm when the storm was near max intensity. And clearly, Michael was the best formed hurricane so far in the Atlantic this year. Since then, Michael has started to become a little more disorganized as we have some of the northern outflow being cut off by a trough approaching from the northwest. So Michael is going to gradually weaken without impacting anyone. The biggest concern as of late is Hurricane Leslie, as there has been the chance that Leslie would directly impact the island of Bermuda, and then potentially go on to impact portions of the Atlantic provinces of Canada. As of the 5 p.m. Eastern Time Advisory from the Hurricane Center, maximum sustained winds are still 75 miles per hour, the hurricane is nearly stationary, and a tropical storm watch is now in effect for Bermuda, as the center of circulation is expected to pass just to the east of the island, by 2 p.m. on Sunday. By next Tuesday afternoon, Leslie is still forecast to be a hurricane and be situated to the south of Newfoundland. I must say that there has been a positive trend in the models within the past 12 to 24 hours, and as you can see, nearly all the tropical model members are now taking the storm just to the east of Bermuda, and the 12Z GFS ensemble members are now also in agreement with a more easterly track, so this would certainly be good news for the island. We can now roll out tropical storm force winds, but as of right now, the chances of hurricane impacts are lessening with time. This is also good news for interest in the Atlantic provinces of Canada, although we still see several model members still advertising a threat, especially to Newfoundland. And as of right now, I would not place that forecast track much more to the east of Newfoundland at this time. And there is still the chance that the models could deviate a little bit more toward the east or west. So once again, everyone up there should still be monitoring this storm very closely. Leslie is still battling some vertical wind shear, and it's also causing a lot of upwelling since the storm is nearly stationary. So little in the way of intensification is forecast over the next 24 to 48 hours. And we do see general agreement here between the intensity models. If anything, we may see a very slow strengthening toward Category 2 status, but overall the consensus is for an upper end Category 1 or low end Category 2 as the storm passes just to the east of Bermuda. As we are approaching the evening hours, we are starting to lose the visible satellite imagery, but you can see Hurricane Leslie situated in the eastern corner of the frame, and you can see that there has been a moderate blow-up of convection, and we can also see that on the enhanced infrared, although this is not a rather extreme blow-up, and that is more than likely because of the upwelling of the water temperatures that we are seeing, and until the storm starts to move more northerly, it's going to be very difficult for Leslie to continue to generate very intense convection, and in addition to that, we still have an upper level low situated to the northeast of the Bahamas. And it almost looks like we have another mid to upper level trough just to the north of Leslie. And both of these mid to upper level features are inducing some moderate southwest vertical wind shear. Usually the amount of surface observations in the middle of the Atlantic are lacking. But the good news is that we do have a buoy situated just to the west of the center of Hurricane Leslie. And the first graphic that I'm showing you is the air pressure and the pressure is continuing to fall. It's now down to around 998 millibars as the center is making its closest approach to the buoy. And the winds at this location are gusting to 55 to 60 knots, which is just under hurricane force, and those winds are likely much higher to the northeast. And as a result of those continuous winds, the significant wave heights are now starting to approach 25 to 30 feet, and the swells are expected to only increase with time, and this is something that interest in Bermuda can still anticipate. And as a result of the continuous winds and the upwelling, the water temperatures are continuing to cool below the center of Leslie. At first, the water temperatures were between 85 and 86 degrees, but they are continuing to drop off, and they are approaching 80 degrees at this hour. More on Leslie and the latest available model guidance in just a moment, but I also want to briefly touch on the remnants of Isaac situated in the north-central Gulf of Mexico. The Hurricane Center is still giving this feature a 40% chance of development within the next 48 hours. However, I would place those odds closer toward 10% as the surface circulation is still well exposed to the north of all of the convection and all the convection is being blown off to the south of the center. And this is as a result of a lot of northerly vertical wind shear 
that we can see on the water vapor imagery. There is still an upper level low near the Florida Peninsula and there is a lot of troughing out across the central Gulf Coast so conditions do not appear to be favorable for this system to develop. This is the 12Z run of the Canadian CMC model and we can see that Hurricane Leslie is forecast to just barely miss Bermuda to the east but it's still showing a direct hit on Newfoundland so all interest there should keep up with the progress of Leslie and it shows the remnants of Isaac getting quickly pushed into Florida in advance of a cold front and it's keeping the rest of the Atlantic fairly quiet although we do have a strong tropical wave to the west northwest of the Cape Verde Islands by day 6. The 18Z run of the GFS is also showing little to no development in the eastern Gulf of Mexico and it's also continuing with its more easterly trend with Leslie staying to the east of Bermuda but still it's going to come fairly close to Newfoundland in the extended range and that is why we still cannot stress enough that interest there should be on the lookout for Leslie and much like with the CMC model we are seeing the potential for development in the central Atlantic although if the troughing remains so significant out across the central and western Atlantic it would likely make a turn to the north before reaching the Caribbean. Finally, this is a look at the 12Z EC MWF 500 millibar mid-level steering forecast and we can see why the trend has been toward the east with Leslie over the past 24 hours. Over the next one to two days, the European is now showing a much more progressive trough out across the eastern United States and this trough is going to help to induce more of a north-northeasterly turn. But as we go into days four and day five and especially day six, so this is Wednesday morning, we are still looking at potentially significant impacts along Newfoundland and that is something that we will have to closely watch. By next Thursday and into Friday the European model is also advertising Central Atlantic development and as we go into the day 8 through 10 forecast period the European is trying to develop the system into a tropical storm or hurricane. So we could be looking at another system very similar to Leslie out there in the western Atlantic but this is a 10 day forecast. So that wraps up your tropical weather update for this Thursday. Stay tuned to 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app for more updates.